Good morning. Today in this tutorial, we are going to discuss sample one for the university entrance exam. Let's uh, start with the first question. This one you see over here, the chlorine atom has an atomic number of 17 and a mass number of 35. Therefore, a chlorine atom has dash neutrons. To find the number of neutrons, first of all, you have to understand in an atom we have 10. Meaning, we have proton, we have electrons, and we have neutrons. You know, in an atom, there will be a nucleus. Inside the nucleus, you will see protons and neutrons. And outside, you will see electrons revolving around. You just imagine these are electrons and there are inside neutrons and protons. See, when you uh, look at the atomic number and the mass number for chlorine, they have given here atomic number of 17 and a mass number of 35. You look for the big number. Big number is always mass number. Do you know what is a mass number? Mass number meaning it will be the total number of protons and neutrons. Whereas atomic number is just the number of protons present in it. So if you want to find the number of neutrons, you see here mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons as well. The atomic number is just the number of protons. So if you need to find number of neutrons, this number that is the total of proton plus neutron minus proton number that is atomic number, you will get 18. So the answer over here is 18. Let's see the next question. A mole. You remember, one mole of any substance will have 6.02 into 10 to the power 23 number of particles. Sometimes you can just just uh, ignore this 0 0.2. So it is 6 into 10 to the power 23 you can use. Okay, this much of hydrogen molecules. If you are looking for hydrogen atom, see this two, so you have it will be two times of this for hydrogen atom. For hydrogen molecule, it is this answer, 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 23 molecules of hydrogen. Let's see the next question. In an electrically neutral atom, the number of dash and dash are equal, you know, in pen. That is proton, electron, neutron. These are the subatomic particles present in an atom. You know, proton is positive. Electron is negative. And neutron, no charge. So, if positive three there, three protons, to cancel this out, you need to have three electrons also. So protons and electrons must be equal to make it neutral. One positive, one negative cancel out. So proton and electron must be equal to make, to keep the atom as neutral. So the answer here, protons and electrons. Let's see the next question. A triple bond contains dash sigma bond and dash pi bonds. Suppose we can take an example of carbon carbon triple bond. Okay, in this compound. One of the bond that must be a sigma bond. Sigma meaning linear overlapping. An atom, if it overlaps like this, it will form sigma bond. Sigma bond is strong bond because the area of overlap will be more. Whereas a pi bond, that will be having a parallel overlapping. 
this is parallel overlapping this is axial overlapping or you know linear overlapping so this will be strong sigma will be strong and pi would be a weak bond so whenever there will be multiple bond more than one bond one must be sigma the other bonds are pi bonds okay remember if there is more than one bond between the atom the first bond that forms will be sigma all other bonds second bond will be pi third bond also will be pi so one sigma is only possible and here three bonds so remaining two will be pi let's see the next question which of the following is not true for group 1a metal group 1a metals are called alkali metals these are called alkali metals and most of them are soft yes they are very soft metal and highly reactive okay the atomic radius increases with increasing molecular weight that is obvious when you go down in any group the number of protons increases as well this will become bigger 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 so atomic radius would increase that's true then they are named the alkaline earth metals that's strong they are named as alkali metals so here this is not true means this is the answer the electronic configuration of their atom ns1 because they have one electron in their outer shell so it will be having an electronic configuration of ns1 and plus one will be its normal oxidation state let's see the next question which of the following list shows in the molecular forces uh, in order of increasing strength that you have to know hydrogen bonds are the strongest bonds in the molecular forces that present between the covalent molecules so first will be hydrogen bonding then there will be london dispersion or first will be yeah, hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding will be the strongest one so here this is strongest hydrogen bonding then dipole dipole interaction then london dispersion so the answer over here is b remember the hydrogen bonding is the strongest in the molecular force present in any covalent molecule to form hydrogen bonding you need to have phone fluorine oxygen or nitrogen must be present in the compound like in hf they can form hydrogen bonding and water they can form hydrogen bonding because they have oxygen here water has oxygen hydrogen fluoride has fluorine and they have lone pair of electrons okay so any of these element must be present and hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force present in covalent compounds so this is the highest then dipole interactions that would be present in any compound with difference in their electronegativity like this see hydrogen and chlorine they have a difference in their electronegativity that's what they will share the electrons unevenly chlorine will take it closer to chlorine so that it will make a dipole this is a positive negative so two poles this uh, attractive at the, the nearby molecule so it will be forming dipole dipole interaction that is the next one the weakest intermolecular force is london force london force depends on the electron cloud ch4 has the uh, lower london force than c2h6 like which is just based on the electron cloud if you have more electrons it will have more london force but among these intermolecular forces london force is the weakest force and this is hydrogen bonding will be the strongest okay this is present in covalent compounds only let's see the next question what is the molarity of sodium hydroxide solution containing 6 grams of sodium hydroxide in 0.5 liters of solution Oh, these kind of questions you have to solve like this. There are two triangles you have to remember. First one, number of moles is equal to volume times concentration. This is concentration. Concentration is expressed in mol mol per liter. 
that we call molarity. If it is small per liter, we call molarity. We keep capital M. And this is William. William usually in liters or in DM cube. This is number of moles. The other thing you have to remember for finding the number of moles, this one. Number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. This is molar mass. Molar mass you can get from periodic table by adding the atomic masses of different elements. Okay, this is moles. And this is mass. Mass usually given in the question in grams. So here we have six grams of sodium hydroxide. They are asking for the molarity. To find molarity, you have the equation this by this, that is number of moles over volume. So we don't know the number of moles. To find the number of moles from the mass, we have to use this equation. Number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. So mass over here is six and molar mass of sodium hydroxide. When you look at the periodic table, sodium, you will see it's 23 and oxygen, you will find it is 16. Hydrogen is one that you can see from the periodic table. Then you will get 40 grams. So six over 40 that you will get an answer. 0 0.15. 0 0.15 moles. So now you can use this concentration equation to find the concentration or molarity of the substance. Molarity is concentration. And it's in mole per uh, mole per liter. It is represented by capital letter M. So here 0 0.15 over the volume here given as 0 0.5. So 0 0.15 over 0 0.5 you get answer 0 0.3 molar, 0 0.3 molar. This is the answer. OK, let's move on. Next question. A chemical commodity act as a proton donor is known as. That is the definition for bronsted lowry acid. OK, you have to remember these three models of atom, three models of acids. Arrhenius, that is. H plus producer, okay? H plus is uh, represented as proton. Proton, uh, sometimes it is, you know, another uh, word which is being used for H plus because once the electron is being removed from hydrogen, it will have only one proton. So a chemical compound that act as a proton donor, H plus donor is bronsted lowry acid, okay? Now, which of the following pairs of molecules and the molecular geometry is wrong? Remember, you have to know VSEPR theory here, valence cell electron pair repulsion theory. It says that if you have two electrons around the central atom, if you have two pairs of electrons around the central atom, it will be arranged in maximum distance like if you have two pairs it will be linear like this maximum distance uh, by the way double bond electrons are very close so this one bond together we just considering it's a one electron pair okay there are four electrons but together we are considering it so this is co2 co2 is linear if you have three electron pairs uh, like in BF3, it will be arranged to keep the maximum distance among uh, the electron pairs around the central atom. So to keep maximum distance between these electron pairs to reduce repulsion, the best structure will be trigonal planar. This is trigonal planar. And if you have four electron pairs, it will be represented like this. Uh, it's a tetrahedral model. 
you see over here, it's a tetrahedral. So this is OK. This is OK. This is OK. We all correct. And H2O. H2O actually having four pairs of electrons, but two of them are lone pairs. You see here, this is a, these two are lone pair. Lone pair means it is not there in the bonding. If lone pair electrons, we will not count for the shape. Sorry, we will count for the shape, but there will be a more repulsion from that. So if you have four electron pairs, it is supposed to be tetrahedral, but this we will not keep in the structure. So this uh, shape we can say bent. It's correct. And for NH3, NH3, it's not trigonal planar because nitrogen has a two electrons uh, on the central atom, a lone pair of electron present on nitrogen. So this will be pyramidal. It will be pyramidal. So this is the wrong one. OK, so they are asking for which one is wrong. So answer here. NH3 is not trigonal planar, it's pyramidal. Last question, which formula represent a salt? You know, salts are from acid-base reactions, so you can say neutralization reactions. It's with OH, this is an alkali, so it's not a salt. Uh, this is with OH, this is not an alkali, but this is an organic compound, we call it as alcohol. And COOH comes, that is an organic acid. And sulfur dioxide, this is an acidic gas. Here, KCL. KCL is the salt. You know, it is the salt of hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, all the salts are called chlorides. Okay. When potassium hydroxide, reacts with hydrochloric acid, it will form potassium chloride plus water. This is the salt which is being formed. You know, you have to remember an acid reacts with an alkali or a base that will form salt plus water. Okay, then you remember if it's sulfuric acid, If you remember, it's sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Sulfuric acid salts are called sulfates. If with potassium hydroxide, it, could, it would form potassium sulfate. It can form sodium sulfate. And if it's nitric acid, HNO3, that would be nitrates. So you remember, based on the acid, uh, the salt would differ. This is nitrates. You can say sodium nitrate and a NO3. Okay. So salts are from acid-base reactions or a neutralization reaction. So potassium chloride is a salt formed from uh, a reaction between hydrochloric acid with an alkali. So here the answer is B. So next part we will be uh, making another video and I'll be sharing with you. So part two will be soon.